Well, there's apparently some big breaking news about Oracle uh, buying TikTok, but I'm not going to talk about any of that. Um, not doing financial markets today. Uh, what I'm going to talk about are these riots that sprung up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, now, I, you know, I found this pretty interesting to watch last night and well, yesterday afternoon, because I thought Lancaster, Pennsylvania, was a place with like roving, rolling hills and Amish people. I didn't know that it was like a city that had, uh, you know, uh, urban blight and stuff like that. You know, I didn't, uh, I didn't realize that there was a place where you could have any sort of uh, racial incident. Uh, like the one we're discussing today. But before I get into the details of what exactly happened, I think I should talk about what we were hearing first on, on social media as this was starting to unfold. Uh, the story uh, that we originally heard was that uh, the, the cops murdered an unarmed 14-year-old autistic black child, which as you might imagine, sounds pretty bad. Wow, they killed a 14-year-old autistic kid I mean, that's just, that's inexcusable. These, uh, all cops must be bastards, right? You know, especially coming right off the heels of uh, the, the situation in Compton, which I discussed yesterday, in which two cops were shot, and you thought, well, maybe that'll, be, you know, some people feel sympathetic towards the cops after that, because those two cops didn't do anything wrong, so, you know, what did they deserve? But then you hear that a cop shot and killed 14-year-old autistic boy? Well, I mean, gosh. Uh, you know, that's more than just a few bad apples. So those two in the car, they probably deserved what they got. But lo and behold, <laughs> it turns out that this was not a 14-year-old autistic black boy, uh, but rather a 27-year-old uh, Hispanic who was wielding a knife and chasing a cop down the street. Now, we know this because, well, not only because they have the guy's body, um, which apparently was left uncovered for a long period of time, so you thought, you would think people would have noticed that he wasn't a 14-year-old boy um, and wasn't even black. <laughs> but anyway, now since there are, there's body cam footage, um, you know, it's, it's very simple. You see cops walking down the street. He looks towards this doorway. Um, you know, a woman steps out, and then behind her comes this guy who's just running out of the house. And he runs out onto the street, you know, holding a knife up. And he's holding the knife up and chasing this cop, taking big strides. It looks like the guy's leaping through the air. And so the cop takes off and tries to dash away. And of course, you know, if you're a cop, you're, you're wearing a lot of stuff. Uh, you're pretty weighted down. You've got your, you know, you've got your, uh, your Batman tool belt on, full of your taser and your mag light and uh, probably pepper spray and, uh, you know, a gun and probably like four mags. And then underneath, I'm sure you're wearing like, uh, you know, soft body armor um, and uh, of course, always long pants. Uh, and this guy's coming out in his, you know, in his basketball shorts and a wife beater. So he's he's clearly got the speed advantage over this cop. So the cop uh, very quickly has to turn around and he draws his weapon and shoots at the guy and he drops dead. Seems like a pretty, you know, cut and dry situation. Crazy man with a knife uh, tries to kill a cop and the cop kills him first. Well, we are to the point in this country that even an event such as this, um, you know, in which there's there's you know, no, there's no real logic by which you could, you know, try and contort this situation to make the cop look bad. Um, people are still outraged over this and willing to riot. And they, were, you know, went down to uh, the uh, the police headquarters and were smashing windows and were, uh, you know, getting into it with people. And they had their uh, they had their their white allies go to the front and form, you know, a shield to protect the the protesters of color, which I just have to say, if you're one of those white folks who go down there and, uh, you know, some non-white folks tell you, you know, hey, go up front and, you know, and form a shield so that if the cops come out and shoot us, they shoot you first. Um, I, I would really, you know, rethink my whole, um, you know, anti-racism identity at that point. You have to be a, a, a certain kind of, of mentally ill or, you know, just sick person. Um, to accept that kind of treatment, to have someone, uh, you know, dehumanize you in a way and say that you need to be their shield because of your skin color. And, you know, to those white folks who did, you know, as they were told and, and went uh, to the front of the line uh, to, uh, I, I guess, to try and absolve themselves of white guilt, um, I hope that they got, you know, exactly what they wanted um, and were, uh, you know, beat over the head with a baton by, a, uh, by an evil racist cop. 
Because I have to say, you know, at least when it comes to the actual black BLM, um, you know, uh, protesters or rioters or uh, insurgents, it, at least you can sort of see how they are acting in their own self-interest, even if I think it's misguided. You know, kind of like with the Nazis, uh, say what you will about Adolf Hitler, but at least he wasn't a, a cuck, uh, unlike these white folks here. Uh, and the same is true for the for the BLM folks who are actually black. You know, because I can understand if, if your whole thing is Black Lives Matter, uh, and you and you say you know white lives don't matter. You know, that's that's not too inconsistent to me. Um, I think it's wrong, obviously, uh, but uh, but it's not inconsistent. It, it's not something that makes me recoil in the same way as uh, as someone's hatred for themselves uh, does. Because I, I think that they're that just in general, people who have a very low opinion of themselves and uh, and don't feel like there's anything that they can do to correct that. You know, they, they don't have problems with their with how they've led their lives or not. They just have an inherent um, hatred uh, for themselves or an inherent uh, lack of confidence. That really just depresses me and makes me sad to see. You know, kind of like those. Everyone knows those women who constantly get into abusive relationships and make excuses for the guy you know it, it, it's that kind of uh, that kind of mentality but anyway I, I got off onto a big tangent there uh, I think I should get back to uh, what really matters here and that is the fact that um, what I said uh, yesterday about uh, you know escalating tensions is holding true uh, this is certainly um, this this in and of itself is not an escalation but it is evidence of the escalation of the hatred for the cops because we have a situation where the cops um, you know not only not only did they do nothing wrong but they immediately released the body cam footage so everyone who was out um, you know in front of the police station last night could look it up on their phone and they were apparently according to uh, um, uh, the different accounts I was following who were there on the ground um, Lancaster Patriot was one of them all lives matter show uh, Drew Hernandez was the other one these folks saw the body cam footage. They saw very clearly that the officer was acting in self-defense, and they didn't care. They said, well, he still shouldn't have killed him. Cops aren't supposed to kill people, um, which uh, I guess that's a that's a, uh, a novel position. Um, so essentially their point is we don't care if the cops are right or wrong. The cops should not exist, period. And so any person who dies as a result um, you know, of the police – uh, whether they were uh, whether they were doing something wrong or not is, is irrelevant. If the police didn't exist, that person um, would not have been killed by the police. And so this is, you know, I have to give them credit. This is a principled position, but it is a far more extreme position uh, than one would have encountered um, even a couple of months ago. And it's interesting, like I pointed out, um, uh, this guy did not appear to be black. Um, I, I'll try and have the, the picture of him running at the guy, at the police officer um, up so you can see, but uh, you know he's, he's pretty light-skinned and he's you know I mean he has a Hispanic name. His name is uh, Ricardo Munoz or, or something like that. And so I, again, I, I, this is you know somewhat to their credit, even though they're saying that this was a black man and this is a Black Lives Matter thing. Um, I guess you could say, well, at least their police hatred extends to people of other races. Although, you know, maybe I shouldn't since they are still trying to claim the guy to be black. And they're saying, well, this is, matters because it's a black guy. But hey, the fact that this happened in, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania tells you it can happen anywhere. Because Lancaster, Pennsylvania is not exactly a massive urban center uh, where we're constantly hearing about, you know, police encounters with, uh, with ordinary people. It's just a random town uh, in the United States. Uh, and there's plenty more city, you know cities of that size and scope uh, in the country and apparently you now every time there's an officer involved shooting they're gonna have to worry about people rioting outside the police station you know and if that's the case if there's that many people all across this country um, who have a uh, total disregard uh, for uh, you know the police as an institution well then I don't see how they can continue to operate in the way that they have up until now and I don't think that this ends necessarily in, uh, you know, the police having some sort of reconciliation with all of the, uh, you know, the malcontents of our society who have decided that they are the ultimate evil. Honestly, I don't know where this goes because, uh, I mean, you could say they're going to abolish the police, but that's not going to happen. It hasn't happened anywhere. 
um, in the world. No matter how uh, left-wing you get, you don't get rid of the cops. You just get different cops. Um, you know, and of course, as you know, as an ANCAP, um, I have ideas about how to get rid of the police. But those are not ideas that BLM is interested in. Those are um, not any um, sort of uh, proposals that are being considered by anybody. Uh, you know, get rid of, get, you know, increasing uh, the uh, the rate of uh, of armed individuals in the community, um, localizing the police down to you know smaller levels, which again is something that wouldn't even they would only really change in big cities because in big cities. Um, that's where you have these massive police forces of people from all about, you know, different parts of town policing, you know, neighborhoods they're not familiar with. You know, a small city like Lancaster, Pennsylvania, the police would just stay the same under, you know, that sort of, you know, reform idea. And so if, uh, you know, if, if reforming the police is not going to satisfy these people, if the police simply not killing innocent people isn't going to satisfy these people, uh, and anarcho-capitalism is certainly not on the table, you know, where does all this lead? And all I can see is more violence and more division. I mean, how can you deal with people who have, you know, zero regard uh, for any kind of legal authority um, or of any sort of, I, I don't know, standards? I mean, what are, we, what are you supposed to do in this situation? The guy was chasing after him with a knife and they're still mad. But as I've said time and time again, um, all of this, I don't think, is rooted really in people's frustration with the police. I think that this is where people are channeling their frustration. Um, and so therefore, perhaps, um, you know, this will all just go away if we're able to fix those issues. But, you know, the deep uh, issues of uh, which I think are rooted in our financial system um, are not being addressed. Uh, the only thing really that can uh, change what I think we see as the root problem is, you know, a massive crash that many people think is, you know, is inevitable at this point. Um, as soon as the Fed loses control um, and is not able to prop up the system anymore. But what does the world look like after that's over? How long does it take us to get there? Are we just going to have massive riots um, until, uh, you know, the Fed allows uh, the great bubble to, to finally pop? I don't know exactly, but it's something I'm going to have to think about in the coming days and, and, and try to develop, um, you know, an idea to, uh, to better uh, forecast w what I think is coming. But for now, apparently the police can do no right. Um, we have crossed the Rubicon as far as that's concerned. There is no um, nuance between, you know, good actions by a cop and, you know, and bad actions. It, it is, we really have come... Uh, um, fully into the idea of, of all cops are bad. So with that said, if you get anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day and I hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.